We got Coach O coming up here yeah. in a couple of minutes, and the defensive backs is going to be the centerpiece. I don't know if you've had a chance to read the piece on Derek Stingley Jr. put out by Cody Worsham yesterday on LSUsports.net. There's also an audio piece to it from a podcast standpoint where Worsham sits down with the unanimous freshman All-American in, uh, in Stingley. Some things that I learned in reading it, uh, he, he's got a real opportunity to be a three-time unanimous All-American. Yeah. Uh, that has not been done since James Laurinaitis did it between 06 and 08 at Ohio wow. State. It hasn't been done in the SEC since Herschel Walker did it in the early 80s. Damn. Um, he would be the only, uh, he would only be, he was, he was the first and only true freshman defensive player that was a unanimous All-American. First. Ever. 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 So, I mean, you're talking about a guy um, that is on a trajectory at DBU to maybe be the best of all time to yeah. come through here. I mean, he's, he's, he's laid down the first year of groundwork. Well, nobody had a better freshman year. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody. Um, nobody in the history of the sport. <laughs> I mean, Apparently, dude. Forget the program. I mean, I guess that's how we can sit here. I was kind of laughing because during headlines, we were talking about how, yeah, I think defensive backfield may be the most talented group on the team. It shows what an absurd wealth of players Bush and uh, Corey Raymond have put together there that I can say that, and that's after losing Christian Fulton and Grant Delpit, like losing like first-round talent, and yet still – I feel like that group's probably the best team, and a lot of that is because of Derek Singh. I mean, I, I don't know. I think he'll win the Thorpe Award next year. I don't think that's that's too crazy, which is – it is odd how good he is that I feel like I can say that I can expect him to win that award when the math – I mean, it's just never on your side. So so you know Stingley start. Um, who starts at the other corner? Do you think Ricks or Flott? Right now I put my money on Flott. Okay. You know, I just think that Flott really had a good freshman season. From, yeah, he did. From, from the, the, the responsibility he was given, and it wasn't a lot, but whenever he was put out there, he didn't cost you and he made plays. Well, and he earned it through the practice field. It wasn't someone who, you know, I mean, guys adjust at different rates. He, he wasn't a guy who came out, just immediately established himself like Stingley. He had to get better and better like Mo Hampton did throughout the year. Better and better, and he won enough battles, impressive enough in practice to give a shot in the game. And then when they got the shot in the game, both Hampton and Flott, they did really well. And for as great as that 2019 LSU team was, and it'll go down in history as one of the best college football teams of all time, maybe the best. If you're a true freshman making an impact on yeah, that man. team, I don't care whether it's on the offensive or defensive side of the ball. And Stingley came in knowing that he was going to start. He was starting during bowl preparation in the Central Florida yeah. game. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it, it, Aranda said he was the best defensive back that they had on, on campus then. But to have guys like Flott and Jay Ward – and you bring up Mo Hampton, Ward, yeah. uh, who who were true freshmen. Well, okay, let's talk about Hampton real quick. Okay, okay. So I think Kerry Vincent is Nickelback mm -hmm. locked down. Do um, you expect Kerry Vincent to compete for that opposite corner? No, I think I think they like him at nickel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, nickel's its own thing now. We'll ask in my o, mind. Well, I, I want to ask O that coming up. Um, strong safety, Jacoby Stevens, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, and then what about Todd Harris and Mo Hampton and free safety? Because that does become a bit interesting. They love. Todd Harris, as we've talked to multiple coaches about on the show, one of the unheralded losses of last season. But then Mo Hampton, like we said, one of the latecomer success stories of last season. A lot of the confusions in, in, in breakdown um, came, especially early on, came because of the absence of Todd Harris. Yep. It's very important to have your cerebral player back there who can line everybody up. And Harris is a guy that has, has some skill. He was another one that was that last scholarship player in the class a couple of years ago. So, I mean, he, he's, he's a high-end guy. But, you know, Mo Hampton comes in with, with, with a lot of accolades, a lot of skill. And when he got in the game last year and he finally saw it and it started to click, I think of one play against Arkansas where he filled a run hole and <laughs> came in like a bullet, man. Yeah. And not only did he get there, but he came with an attitude and hit you once he, once he showed up. Um, I, I love those options. I think at the end of it, I think Hampton's a slightly better better mm. player. I think, um, mm, yeah, because, I mean, you have the leadership there. You still have Stevens. Like you said, though, I think maybe kind of the leadership and experience of Harris is going to give him the edge in terms of playing time. 